Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Brett from GCG Turbochargers, one of Australia's premier Garrett distributors. And we just wanted to talk a little bit about the current turbocharger technology, what's going on with Garrett's brand and what they've got. Now the first thing, Brett, that caught my eye as I walked past your stand was this here, this, this new turbo, well relatively new turbo from Garrett. And uh, what caught my eye was the V-band housing with the split pulse. So can you just tell us a little bit First of all, let's go back and talk about the difference between single entry and split pulse. Can you just tell us the differences and the advantages? Okay, thanks Andre, and um, uh, um, hello viewers. Okay, so this is Garrett's new technology. It's a, um, it's a split pulse turbine housing versus the old school single entry, which we see over here, uh, which is most common in the performance aftermarket. Uh, a lot of manufacturers do the single entry. Single entry allows for a lot easier manifold manufacturing. Um, basically all the, all the gases from the exhaust manifold pulse straight into the turbocharger. Difference with a twin pulse is you can actually set the manifold up with the pulsing of the engine and the firing of the cylinders to actually direct the gas at the turbine wheel for optimum boost response. So in a four cylinder application for argument's sake, you could have, uh, say, um, the, two, the two earliest fire, firing cylinders going to the inside of the turbine wheel. That allows for a, a, a quicker spool of the turbo. Um, and then the, the second two cylinders bring the bulk of the gas in and then uh, the turbo continues to, to, to build pressure um, as you grow in the RPM band. So, so th there's, there's a bit of, as you say, there's a bit more involved in designing an exhaust manifold to take advantage of a split pulse housing. Um, I, I guess the, the question is, is the effort actually worth it? What sort of improvements and boost response would you expect to see on the same style of turbo going from a single entry housing to a split pulse? Okay, we're seeing um, on direct back-to-backs on a GT X35 where we run a single pulse uh, manifold versus a twin pulse manifold. On an SR20 we're seeing 500 RPM earlier boost response. So uh, that's quite significant. No, 500 RPM is huge. That definitely makes it worth, uh, worth the effort. Okay, and as well as that, Garrett's ball bearing technology is fairly well established, you know, it's, it's nothing new, but could you just uh, give us a bit of a rundown on that ball bearing technology? I think it's often misunderstood. Can you tell us where the advantages between ball bearing and journal bearing technology are? Okay, there's, there's, there's two main advantages. The first is spool. Obviously the turbocharger spools a bit quicker than a bush bearing turbocharger. Uh, and you get, the, you get the turbo match the engine correctly and it, it'll respond really quickly. Uh, the second is the, um, the longevity of the turbo. You maintain your turbocharger, uh, the, the thrust loads that a ball bearing turbocharger handle over a bush bearing uh, uh, bronze bush turbocharger are significant. They're something in the vicinity of five times the thrust load. So uh, with that, um, and the higher boost pressures that these turbos are running, you know, some guys are running plus 30 pounds of boost, um, these turbochargers will stand up, where the old uh, bush bearing and thrust thrust arrangements won't. So, Okay, yep, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, one of the questions I get asked a lot is about the serviceability or whether, whether a bull bearing turbo is rebuildable uh, compared to the old general bearing, and I know that puts a lot of people off purchasing. Can you explain uh, the ins and outs of rebuilding a bull bearing turbo? Sure. Uh, okay, to rebuild a ball bearing turbo is very similar to a bush bearing turbo. Okay, uh, the only real difference is a, is, a, is a ball bearing versus bush and the, the costs in, incurred with that. Um, both are fully rebuildable um, and, and we do that at GCG every day. Uh, it's something that um, um, is quite cost effective versus a new turbo. Uh, component parts have come down dramatically as have turbocharger costs in the last two or three years. So um, you could expect if, you, if you're paying say $1,500 for a brand new Garrett GTX turbocharger these days, you'll pay about eight eight hundred and fifty dollars to get it rebuilt. Uh, okay, that's not too bad really. Um, one last thing I want to talk about is the billet compressor wheels that we're seeing in a lot of these turbos. The GT was the older style with the cast compressor wheel. We've now moved on with a lot of these turbochargers being offered with the GTX uh, billet compressor wheel. Can you just tell us what the, the difference between the cast compressor wheel and the billet is and where the advantages lie there? Okay, so <clears throat> with the GTX wheel you'll see here, uh, this is a machined wheel with um, 11 blades versus the old uh, cast wheel which was a, um, a 12 bladed wheel, 6 up and 6 down, so 6 primaries, 6 secondaries. Now, <clears throat> um, the design of the wheel, um, which actually goes back to early turbine technology, uh, actually flows better than the, um, the older uh, GT wheel. Um, 
And being made out of billet, it's, it's actually more durable. Um, and at the boost pressures, again, that these guys run um, won't come apart. So a cast wheel can have a flaw internally in it and uh, at a high boost pressure can actually split or destroy itself. Um, where the, the billet wheel made out of uh, virgin metal, no, it, it'll, it'll hold together. So if you're running sort of, again, you know, I've got guys running 60 pound of boost on some of these big, some of these real big turbochargers and um, they'll, uh, they'll hang together, no problem. Okay, so I guess the question I've got on, on that is, to, to the guy on the street, maybe we're not running 60 PSI of boost, maybe we've got a, a relatively standard car and we're running maybe 20 PSI of boost. We go from a GT compressor wheel to a GTX compressor wheel. What sort of differences could we expect to feel basically on the dyno and then seat of the pants? Okay, so the new design uh, comes with the benefit of better, better response and, and much better mid-range torque. And so to the average driver on the street with a, with a nice tough street car, that's what he really feels. The seat of the pants stuff is torque, mid-range torque, and that's what these wheels deliver. Um, they, uh, <coughs> their, their design allows for improved airflow, um, and, and you can run less boost pressure to make the same amount of power. Uh, and uh, yeah, they, they come with a, a, the GT ball bearing technology, so um, they, they last. You, you maintain your car and they'll last. Sounds good. Well, look. I think we've learned a little bit more about turbocharger technology. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to have a chat here, Brett, and I hope the rest of the weekend goes well for you. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.